Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Today I'd like to explore something called the geometric derivative or sometimes called the multiplicative derivative. So by definition, it is the following limit which mimics the normal derivative except for that the subtraction of f of x plus h and f of x is replaced by the quotient of f of x plus h and f of x. And then division by h is replaced with exponentiation by 1 over h. So it's like we're ratcheting our operations up one level, if you will. We're still taking the limit as h goes to 0, and our new notation is f star of x, although I'm not totally sure if this is standard notation. So we'll start by seeing why it's really called the multiplicative derivative, and that's because it interacts with the product of functions nicely. So let's calculate f times g star of x. So in other words, we're going to find a product rule for this multiplicative derivative. So by our definition, this will be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h times g of x plus h over f of x times g of x all to the 1 over h power. But now we can split this product into two pieces and using exponent rules we can apply the exponent to each piece. So this will leave us with the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h over f of x all to the 1 over h and then we'll have g of x plus h over g of x also all to the 1 over h. But then if each of these limits exist separately, that means we can split this into two limits. So in other words, we have this as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h over f of x all to the 1 over h times the limit as h goes to 0 of the corresponding thing with our function g. Great. But now that's just f star times g star. So we have, like I said, this is f star of x times g star of x. So reading this from the extreme left to right hand side, we see that the product rule is quite nice for the geometric derivative. That being said, the sum rule would be quite a bummer for this type of derivative, but we won't check that. So let's move on to looking at an example of the geometric derivative of a very simple function. So let's set maybe f of x equal to x. So that's a pretty simple function. That's the identity function. And then let's find its geometric derivative, or in other words, its multiplicative derivative. So f star of x will be equal to the limit as h goes to 0, and then we'll have x plus h over x all to the power of 1 over h, something like that. But that is of type, let's see, 1 to the infinity. But that's an indeterminate form, and that's an indeterminate form that motivates us to take the log of both sides. So let's do that. Let's take the natural log of both sides, leaving us with the natural log of f star of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h times the natural log of x plus h over x, but I'll rewrite that as 1 plus h over x. So something like that. But now let's take this 1 over h and put it in the denominator as just h and recognize now as h approaches 0, this numerator is approaching the natural log of 1, which is 0, whereas this denominator is also approaching 0. So now we've got an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. So we'll have the limit as h goes to 0. Taking the derivative here will give us 1 over 1 plus h over x times 1 over x. Keep in mind we're taking the derivative with respect to h here because h is the argument of our limit. 
So that would be the derivative of natural log of one plus h over x with respect to h. And then we've got this is all over the derivative of h with respect to h, which is just the number one. Now, if we let h approach zero, this thing in our orange circle will approach zero, leaving us with one times one over x, in other words, one over x. So that tells us that the natural log of our geometric derivative is one over x. In other words, our geometric derivative of the identity function is e to the one over x. So as we see, unlike the normal derivative, which turns a function into generally a simpler function, that's not always true, but the derivative of x is one, the derivative of x squared is two x. The normal derivative, I should say, those are all simpler than what we started with. I think we can all agree that the geometric derivative of f of x equals x is quite a bit more complicated. Okay, next up, I'd like to hone in on this step right here, where we took the natural log of both sides and perhaps see that we could recreate this inside of the general limit in order to get a closed form for this geometric derivative in terms of the normal derivative. So let's see if we can do that. If you're looking to start your own domain, personal website, or online store, look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace offers easy to use drag and drop features that make web design a breeze. Even someone like me can build a pretty nice website pretty quickly, and my design skills are not great. We as mathematicians need to step up our website game. Too many math websites are stuck in the early 2000s. I think that we need to really modernize our websites. Squarespace has tons of templates that offer awesome customization options with no coding required. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash michaelpin to save 10% off your first order of a website or a domain. So what are you waiting for? Now is a great time to level up your online presence with a website through Squarespace. And once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so now we're gonna look for a link between the geometric derivative and the normal derivative, and this is motivated by our previous calculation. So let's start with our definition. We have f star of x, like we had before, is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h over f of x, all to the one over h power. And now let's assume that everything works out nicely. And as h goes to zero, notice the interior of this approaches f of x over f of x, which is one, whereas this exponent approaches infinity. Great. I guess here we should maybe assume that we're approaching h from above. Although where I saw this definition, you know, I picked it off the Wikipedia page. Although that being said, I found lots of resources. I'm not sure I ever noticed that this was H from above. Okay, anyway, this is an indeterminate form, this one to the infinity, and generally when we tackle indeterminate forms of this type, just as we did before, we do so by applying the natural log to both sides. So let's do that. So we'll have the natural log of f star of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero from above, if you will, of the natural log of f of x plus h over f of x all over h, where I've like used my log rule along the way just as I did before. So just to reiterate, this one over h will come out as a multiplier by our logarithm rule, but I put that in the denominator. But now let's peer into this. This numerator is now approaching the natural log of one, which is zero. And then this denominator is all also approaching zero. Now you might look at that and say, okay, that means I need to do L'Hopital's rule. And perhaps that would work, but I think there's a better way to do it in this case. Let's notice that this numerator can be rewritten using logarithm rules. The log of a quotient turns into the difference of logarithms. So here we'll have the limit as h goes to zero from above. We'll have the natural log of f of x plus h minus the natural log of f of x all over h. 
But look at this. This looks like the normal difference quotient, really the limit of the normal difference quotient, where our function is really the natural log evaluated at f of x. So that makes this equal to the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of f of x. But we know how to do that with the chain rule. That ends up giving us f prime of x over f of x, like I said, by the chain rule. So let's see, now let's compare this f star is equal to f prime over f of x. Sorry, that shouldn't be f star, that should be the natural log of f star is equal to f prime over f of x. And we can exponentiate both sides to give us a closed form for f star. And that closed form will be something like this. We have f star of x is equal to e to the power f prime of x over f of x. And notice we could retrieve our first example with this fact. Okay, good. Now that we have this closed form, I'd like to finish this video off by maybe calculating or solving the simplest, what I'll call geometric differential equation. So we'll finish this video off by solving what I'll call the simplest geometric differential equation. So I like to think that the simplest nice differential equation is y prime equals y. So here we have y star equals y. Then the initial condition for the simplest differential equation would be y evaluated at zero is one. But as we'll see, the initial condition that makes this geometric differential equation have a nice solution is y evaluated at zero equals e. Okay, so let's get into it, and we'll directly use the result that we just derived on the last board, which wrote our derivative, or our geometric derivative in ter terms of the normal derivative. So this is going to be e to the y prime over y equals y, just because y star is equal to that. Now let's take the log of both sides. That'll give me y prime over y equals the natural log of y. But now let's abuse notation a little bit. Let's take this y prime and rewrite it as dy by dx. So and we'll use the method of separation of variables. That being said, there's a way to do this carefully. If you'd like to, you could check out my differential equations playlist. I have a whole course over at the second channel. So then we'll collect all the y's to one side of the equation, everything else to the other side of the equation. That leaves me with dy over y times natural log of y equals dx. Then that motivates us to take the antiderivative of both sides. Let's notice the antiderivative of the right-hand side is just equal to x plus a constant, so we need to worry about this left-hand side, which we can do with some sort of nice substitution. Let's let u equal the natural log of y. That means that du is equal to dy over y. So let's see, our dy over y is our du, and then we have this natural log of y is u. So that leaves me with the antiderivative of du over u equals x plus a constant. We can take that antiderivative and we'll see that the natural log of u equals x plus a constant. But that means that the natural log of the natural log of y equals x plus a constant, given that u was the natural log of y. Now let's use our initial condition, so we'll evaluate this at y equals e and x equals zero and see what c is. So if y is equal to e, we get the natural log of e, which is one, then the natural log of one is zero. So that gives us zero equals zero plus c. That tells us that c is equal to zero. So we've got our constant is zero and we're left with the equation, the natural log of the natural log of y equals x. So we can solve that by exponentiating two times and we'll end up with y equals e to the e to the x. So this like repeated exponential function. 
And that would be a final solution to this geometric differential equation. And like I said, if you want to learn more about differential equations, ordinary differential equations, I have a full course on my second channel. The first video from that playlist should be on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop.